Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I am going to explain a Chinese fantasy film called How Long Will I Love You? Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Gu Xiaojiao is a 30-year-old woman living in Shanghai. She was 12 when her millionaire father passed away in an accident, and she had to move away from her childhood home. Ever since, Gu started to work. She has been trying to earn enough money to buy the house back. However, her lousy job doesn't pay her well. Then, we are introduced to Lu Ming, a down-on-his-luck property designer. He is desperately looking for a client to invest in his ideas, but hasn't met with any success yet. By the end of the day, both Ming and Gu return home to their shabby neighborhood. Strangely enough, they seem to live in the same apartment, in the same building. Gu puts her clothes in the laundry, while Ming cooks himself dinner. After that, Ming starts to wash vegetables in the sink, and it somehow ends up in Gu's bathtub. Similarly, a loofah from her tub is inside Ming's sink. Strangely enough, her clothes have landed inside his cooking pot, and his dinner is where Gu's clothes are supposed to be. Throughout the night, their belongings somehow continue to end up in each other's apartments. They do not think about it before going to sleep. In the morning, Ming wakes up because of a slap to his face. Gu's room has merged with his and turned into one single giant room. Initially, they panic and think they are being burglarized, but then they register the condition of their rooms, which makes them even more confused. Outside Gu's window is bright, sunny weather, while Ming's side is pouring. The two stand in front of their door, which is also merged. Ming goes first and opens his side of the door. Outside is a world that seems normal to him, but shocking to Gu. It turns out he is 25 years old and lives in the year 1999. Gu quickly goes through her side of the door, and this time, Ming is surprised to see the developed world of 2018. It turns out that they live in the same apartment, but in two different timelines that have somehow merged into one. Gu slaps Ming in the face to see if she is dreaming. When it hurts him, it is clear to both of them that their fates have entangled with no possible explanation. They try opening the doors at the same time, which causes the apartment to merge further. Upon further inspection, they find out they cannot open each other's door and can only walk through it when the other person does. Gu realizes that in Ming's timeline, her father is still alive. She quickly makes her way to her childhood home and sees her younger self playing with her father. The sight makes her emotional, but when she tries to approach them, the earth shakes and stops her. At home, Ming also wants to see what happens to him in the future. Instead of going out, Gu gives him her laptop so he can look himself up on social media. Ming is amazed by the new technology, but when he goes to type his name, the ground shakes again. They register that they cannot make contact with their future or past selves, since two of the same person cannot exist at the same time. At night, Gu plays music on the phone and orders food through AI assistance. Ming is stunned by everything that the new phones can do. In the following scene, a group of wealthy businessmen and scientists are in a meeting about dimensional shifts. The scientist gives an example of a disappearing plane to prove that it traveled through time and dimension before returning to its place of origin. According to his research, a merge of the dimensions has already formed in the city. Now all they have to do is find the coordinates to the place. The businessman plans to use the dimensional portal to make money. We do not see his face throughout the meeting, but it is clear that he is funding the research to profit using the phenomenon. At night, Gu and Ming cannot fall asleep. Gu talks about her father's death and the impact it had on her. She only has his key ring to remember him with after the house and all of his belongings were taken away by loan sharks. The following day, they go about their normal life through the respective sides of their doors. Gu is looking for a rich husband who can buy her the house in exchange for her hand in marriage. She goes on several dates with guys but hasn't found anyone who is willing to fulfill her gold digger fantasies yet. She is on yet another blind date with a man who seems to like her very much. When he asks her what she expects in a relationship, she shows him a virtual presentation of the house. The guy feels like he's in a meeting with a realtor, which is definitely not what he's looking for on a first date. Then, Gu meets a man from an online dating app. She tells him her condition for marriage, and he happily agrees to it. It turns out the man owns a farming business and is a millionaire. He is double Gu's age and talks like a pervert, but she still decides to give him a chance. 
He wants to pay only half of the down payment for the house, so it could be bought in both of their names. They go to an ATM to withdraw the money. Gu goes first and hands the money to the guy, before sending him to buy a bottle of water. But to her unfortunate luck, he turns out to be a scammer who runs away with her money. She has to stay outside the bank for hours before the police arrive and investigate. Ming, on the other hand, is enjoying a snack inside a bathroom stall. He overhears the CEO of his company and his manager talking about an upcoming business. After the CEO leaves, the manager Zhao reveals he plans to steal all of the CEO's money and make him go bankrupt. A few seconds later, he realizes someone is listening to their conversation and pulls Ming out from the bottom of the stall. To keep him mute, Zhao offers to loan him the money that he desperately needs for his business. Ming asks for some time to think about it. Later that day, Ming goes to manager Zhao, who wants to fire him. He has realized that Ming has no evidence to prove that Zhao is planning to betray the CEO. Still, instead of begging for himself, Ming is just worried about the CEO going bankrupt. Zhao calls him a loser for thinking of others above himself. The next day, Gu is at her work at the jewelry store when she bumps into her childhood best friend, Xiaoya. She pretends to be a rich customer to seem more appealing to Xiaoya, who is married to a millionaire. The girls talk for a while and throughout the conversation, Gu boasts about her non-existent billionaire husband. The lies backfire when Xiaoya arranges a dinner between the two couples for that evening. Gu makes Ming wear a rented suit and brings him to the dinner. It goes well for the first half, before Ming drinks from the ice cup, shows the rent tag in his coat, and says that he works as a UFO researcher. At the end of the night, the fake million dollar diamond in Gu's finger falls on the stove and melts. She returns home crying, while Ming consoles her. The two watch the TV together when a show about lottery tickets catches their attention. The next day, they excitedly collect the winning numbers of the lottery ticket and buy them in the year 1999. Even before the results are announced, they start to celebrate. Gu takes Ming out on a date where they play VR games, walk around the city, and go to the bar at the end of the day. They forget that they are broke and drink more than they can afford. Gu promises the restaurant her expensive purse, promising to return the money the next day. The next morning, they wake up on the same bed. They are nervous because it is the day lottery results will be announced. They eagerly wait for the announcement and are overjoyed when they actually win the lottery. However, it doesn't last long since the number on their card disappears right after. Only then do the couple realize that they cannot alter the future in any way. But if so, they are confused why their fates were intertwined. Gu never gets her bag back from the restaurant and returns home angry. On the way, the duo argues and calls each other names. All of a sudden, they notice Ming's face on a large billboard. It is then revealed that in 2018, he changed his name to Shi Yi and has become one of the biggest builders in China. He owns a multi-million dollar company and is about to hold a press conference in a venue that is only minutes away. Ming is shocked to be looking at his future. Gu, who was arguing with him a second ago, starts sweet-talking him. Ming goes to the conference and sees his future self, Shi Yi, for the first time. But the incident causes an earthquake, and the conference has to be cancelled. Shi Yi realizes what is going on when a bunch of memories are added to his brain. Ming's arm is hurt, which creates a scar on Shi Yi's arm as well. This means anything Ming does will directly affect Shi Yi in the future. It is then revealed that the businessman who wanted to profit off the dimensional portal is none other than Shi Yi himself. The scientist says that Ming must go back to how he was before he met Gu, because the new memories might affect his persona, which will affect Shi Yi. The next day, Ming goes to Zhao with a resignation letter. Since he is bound to become successful in the future, he doesn't want to accept the money from Zhao. The same day, Shi Yi visits Gu at work and takes her out on a date. He claims that he wants to treat her because he knows she was close to him in his younger years. The man and Ming are the same people, but Gu doesn't feel comfortable around Shi Yi as she feels with Ming. He takes her to a fancy restaurant, but it is too awkward for Gu to enjoy. At the end of the date, Shi Yi asks her to stay away from Ming because her involvement will cause him to divert from his true purpose in life. He promises to buy her the house she always wanted, in turn, for her loyalty. Gu agrees to do as told, not for the house, but for Ming's future. She returns home at night and hugs Ming, before telling him that she is moving out. She also says that Shi Yi asked him to take manager Zhao's offer. 
The next day, Gu moves out of the apartment, but coincidentally, her door is left open by an umbrella. This means Ming can go to 2018, even without her help. Somewhere else, the CEO finds Zhao in his office and finds out about his plan to betray him. Zhao panics and knocks him out before making him gulp alcohol. He plans to kill the man and make it seem like an accident. Gu is in her home after years when Shi Yi arrives with the bag that she had to give to the restaurant. When Shi Yi turns around, Gu notices a rental tag on his clothes and realizes it is actually Ming. She kisses him and tells him a proper goodbye before he walks away. Both of them cry, knowing that they can never meet each other again. When Ming reaches home, he gets a call from Zhao, who calls him on a bridge. He wants to use Ming's help to kill the CEO and make it seem like an accident. Ming obviously refuses to do so, but Zhao claims that he is in too deep into the matter to turn away at this point. Suddenly, Ming realizes Shi Yi chose to help Zhao in the past, which is the reason for his success. He took over the manager's position after the CEO's death, building his empire on blood. With time, he became ruthless to the workers and cared only about money. That is why he is a completely different person from Ming. The universe has given Ming a chance to make the right decision this time. Furthermore, by the CEO's key ring, he discovers he is Gu's father. All this time, Gu is orphaned because of the decision Shi Yi took. Not wanting to make the same mistake, Ming saves the man's life. As soon as he does so, the evil Shi Yi of 2018 disappears, meaning Ming changed the future. Now, Gu will never have to lose her father and will grow up to be someone else. This also means that the current Gu will cease to exist. In the final scene, we see Gu and Ming return to their apartment in different timelines. When they meet in the middle, Gu disappears. Well, that just goes to show you, gold digging doesn't pay. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.